Fiddler, New Jersey Devils locker room. A couple quick questions. Um, some easy ones, some fun ones. Uh, you started out in Edmonton, right? Some hockey history. You were born right when Wayne was getting ready. Did you see him? Your first NHL game, maybe? Did you see Wayne? Oh, yeah. We, uh, my dad and take us to the games all the time. Uh, you know, obviously, go down for warm ups and watch. You know, skate around and uh, you know it's still uh, those memories that you're, you'll remember forever and uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live standing on the boards and watching those guys. Six or seven Hall of Famers at once. Yeah exactly. And you knew it at the time really right? Yeah of course uh, but no it was it was special to grow up in Edmonton and they got great tradition there and they definitely won a lot of games. Did you see a practice ever? Games? I did. They used to practice at one of the malls. Uh, my mom and dad would take us there and we'd go watch uh, and skate around they'd have no helmets on and right. I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. A quick question, if the league were to go to masks, would you wear one or would you just stick with the visor? Uh, no, I think I'd stick with the visor. Okay. I mean, uh, it gives too you much, too big of an adjustment. Yeah, it's... When you were growing up, did you have to wear a mask? Or I put oh, yeah. young, we didn't have to wear anything, just a little mask guard. No, so. you had to wear a full mask until so you got to junior, 16, okay. and then you got to wear Thanks a half visor. Um, people who play for Heinz in the minors described him as really intense. You've had a lot of coaches, some of them were intense. Can you tell me here, compared to other teams, do you get more scrutiny individually, more time one-on-one -on -one with the coaches, or is it just about the same as the other clubs you played for? I think it's about the same. You know, uh, Coach Heinz is a really intense guy, and, uh, you know, I've... I've had some veteran coaches, and he definitely uh, uh, can hold his own with that, and he, he does a great job with our structure and everything. So, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to play for him. What about uh, the Devils hiring a skills coach a year ago? It happened, so you would have already. Do you have a skill coach right now? Is that him out there on the ice? With yeah. The what sort of stuff has he done with you personally? Just anything you wouldn't have expected, or just a bit oh, of repetition? Just work on, you know, moving the puck around and stick hammer and stuff like that. I think it's great to have him out there for the young kids and uh, you know there's not a whole bunch they can teach me but it's nice to get out there and fill the puck with them every once in a while. You get plenty of extra repetition and skill stuff like getting a shot off or getting yeah, the puck off your stick. Exactly. Um, what about uh, I spoke with one of your teammates while you were still on the team in Dallas, Cody Eakin after a game in New York. I said yeah, he had a great game. I said you were walking through everybody you played against and they trying to make adjustments against you and I remember what he said. He said to be honest I didn't notice who was playing against me. <laughs> and that comes down to like preparation and the coaches drilling out who your opponent is and all this and are you different now than when you started out did, when you were young would you sort of wing and say I'm just gonna do my thing now you've got to be especially your penalty game penalty killer you yeah know exactly who's out on the ice against yeah you. I think so when you're younger you're a little little more naive and you don't really you just want to go and play and now now when you go once you get a little bit older you got to be a little more prepared because you know you have a little more uh, responsibilities and I think that's just one of the things that's evolving in the game is a lot more preparation and, and uh, you know pre-scouting on the other teams when did you notice that change in yourself if you did like between minors and pros uh, it was when probably they about you? six or seven years ago that was about yeah. seven years in my career you know you started getting a lot more video and pre-scouting okay. and uh, get in the other team's tendencies and stuff like that. So not too long. So it's, it's, it hasn't been that whole, whole bunch longer. You went undrafted. Was that a surprise? Were there agents or scouts who were giving you a nod that they thought they were going to draft you? Can you take, take us back to that moment? Did you expect uh, to be drafted or not really? You know what? They, I, I was I was on the central scouting one year, and uh, I, I just didn't get picked. And uh, you know, my agent told me it could be a, t a toss up, a t coin flip, whether you get drafted. But um, you know, everybody's got a path to take, and okay. um, you know, I'm proud of the path I took. I think it happened for a reason, and uh, you know, I've. I've it made me work a little bit harder because I had to work harder than the guys that were drafted and uh, that was one thing my dad always told me, just work harder than those guys and you'll be alright and you know, I finally got a chance in Nashville and made the best of it. I heard you mention that in an interview I saw online a couple years ago actually. Uh, I think you know your, your captain here was also undrafted, Andy Green. Oh really? Yeah. I did not know that. It's probably among the highest numbers of games played for any undrafted player in the history of the NHL and they may get that record at some point. Um, you may have a future role in hockey management. I don't want to take you ahead to the future because you're still playing, but there's something that happened with you in Dallas that would be really valuable to future management type of guy. You played on a team which took a real risk, and it's relevant to New Jersey. They passed on a big Russian prospect, Kachushkin, who was 18 at the time. And he told Dallas, I want to play in the NHL, or I'm not going to play. You were there. I'm sure you probably didn't talk to him too much. He didn't speak English much his first year, but he took a big risk, and maybe it didn't work out. You know, play a teenager, guy coming over from a foreign country. Are there lessons you would draw from that? I mean, if any, 
everybody's individual. You can't really predict the way a guy's going to behave, but they spent a first-round draft choice. New Jersey didn't. They got Corey Schneider. And Jersey fans, were some of them were really upset. They figured, we need a forward, we need a scorer. They didn't take him. Dallas took him. Maybe it didn't work out. Well, I mean, Dallas, a, he's a really good player. He's, he's uh, you know, he, you know, I don't know what, what happened. Uh, I, I don't talk to him a whole bunch, so I don't know exactly what happened contract-wise. So... But at the same time, I think he's, he's still in Dallas's plans, and uh, you know he's, he's going to Russia to develop a little bit more. And, and who knows, he may come back next year. But that's not for me to say. I, I have no idea what's going on there with that. You would have been on the ice with him a bit, and you're on the ice with Sergei Kalinin, who's from Russia. But Kalinin probably speaks a lot more English. And just, did you guys talk a lot tactically? Or Actually, Dallas is pretty good at English. I mean, okay. uh, Cali probably speaks the language of English a little bit better, but uh, you know. Um, Val, Val speaks more English than people than he think talk. he does. Yeah. <laughs> do you and Kalinin talk tactics? You guys are killing penalties sometimes. Yeah, we right? talk. There's mm-hmm. things on the ice that you know, I being an older guy, I try to you know help him out with, and you know, there's things that he says to me that you know help me out. So you know, you have to you have to talk amongst each other because it's it, it, it makes things uh-huh. easier on the ice. The last two, uh, could you compare for us Corey Schneider on the ice to the Finnish goalies you had in Dallas? As a fan, you don't hear it when the goaltenders are giving you instructions. And Stephen Jonto was here. He said that Corey Schneider was a lot more vocal than Mark Denver there, which I wouldn't have expected. Do you notice that Schneider's really like out there and talking to his defenders a lot, or maybe not? Yeah, more, I think more than the goalies you had in Dallas. I think Corey's got a lot of leadership tendencies that most goalies don't. And, you know, you can tell in the way he talks in the room and stuff like that. And um, you know, he's he's one of the best goalies I feel in the league because of because of uh, you know the way he presents himself and you know, there's a lot of good goalies in this league and a lot of them are a little bit different don't say a whole bunch but uh, you know Corey's one of those guys that's not afraid to step up and say something in the room okay. uh, and the last question is just an amusing one I asked Stephen Jonto last year if the team had a trash talker he said it was Bobby Farnham he's gone anybody on the team that's a trash talker that's pretty quiet trash talker not, 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 not Mr. Wood over there. I don't know. <laughs> Let me Maybe, know. I think, it's know. The, I think it's Paul Mary. <laughs> okay. He's the new trash talker. Uh, we'll leave it there. Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too.